Hi, Dr. Lauren. Thanks for having us. Hi, Dr. Lauren. Thank you for inviting us on ZTV. Yeah, I'm so glad you're here, especially for my first one, since you guys know I'm nervous. So it is great to have your faces here. And we also want to uh, acknowledge that we have one committee member who is not here tonight, uh, Dr. Elizabeth Stroot of Core Wellness. So to start, um, Lola, Dr. Lola, would you please just give a brief introduction of yourself and your business and how long you've been here in the community? Uh, of course. So Dr. Lola Caps and I am owner along with my husband of Chrysalis Chiropractic and we have been in the Delray neighborhood since 2003. So we offer chiropractic services, nutrition services, massage services and um, yeah we've been actually as long as we've been in the neighborhood we've actually been part of Delray Business Association back when it was Potomac West Business Association. So we've been here for a while. <laughs> Okay, awesome. So, like, tr in the way, one of the true founders of the wellness community here, or forerunners. All right, and Melissa, you too have also been here quite a while in the community. Could you please give us an introduction of you and your business? Sure. I've been here for quite a while. Um, I've been at Vital Body and Mind since 2007, when it uh, when Sarah Vandergoot of Mind the Mat fame started Vital Body and Mind, and. Um, it, I watched Delray grow so much with the different wellness businesses, but I've been really had such an honor and pleasure to work alongside the different businesses that have kind of come and gone through Vital Body and Mind. We are, um, an umbrella organization with lots of different companies within the umbrella of Vital Body and Mind. So it's, I've been here for quite some time because I'm not going anywhere. <laughs> <laughs> I like it here, and I'm going to stay. So I know. It's the infectious uh, energy of Del Rey. People are gravitated toward here, and they don't want to leave, and I don't blame them. So that's a great description. All right. So, Lola, can you uh, start us off and tell us a little bit more about the Wellness District? What is the Wellness District? Well, let's see. The Wellness District is honestly something that has been, I feel like, forever in the making. Um the wellness community in the Delray area is um, its a very strong community. Um, we have a lot of wellness businesses. It's even have been said in the past um, that it's uh, like having like a restaurant row, that there's just so many different options. If you're looking for something, you're going to find it in Delray as far as wellness and health. Um, so formally for the wellness district that it just, we knew we needed to kind of brand ourselves and give ourselves a name so that people knew who we were and that we were there. And so really it's um, the wellness district is an active group of uh, wellness professionals that are part of the Delray Business Association. And we offer a lot of great services um, to the community. And we really do an awesome job, I think, at bringing the community together. So between a lot of our different events that we have, um, such as we do blood drives, we have the Well Ray um, June Festival, we have the outdoor festival that sadly didn't happen this year, but um, hopefully next year we'll be back in doing that. And um, we have Fit Crawl, we have September Wellness Month, and even in December we do 12 Days of Wellness. So lots of different opportunities and ways that we're getting wellness out to the community. Yeah, great. Thank you for the description. And, you know, when I came to Delray, at least professionally, was in 2013, and I was working in an office above Bon Vivant. I never left my office until 2016 when someone suggested I join the business association to get to meet everybody else. Mm -hmm. And that was one of the best decisions I ever made um, because it was the introduction to how amazing our community is uh, and our overall business community, how supportive everybody is. But I was really surprised at the amount of wellness people that were like wedged away in small offices. Uh, I think, sure. and correct me if I'm wrong, uh, we've been known for our fitness and yoga studios for quite a while, but there's actually a very wide variety of people that are in the wellness district. Could you give us an example of some of the other members and businesses that make up the yeah, wellness the well district? Because I think we have about 45 members now, right? Uh, we do. Um, we have, gosh, I mean, there's so many different um, types of businesses. We have, you know, like myself, chiropractic. There's therapist, um, like yourself. There's Melissa, who does um, 
colon therapy. Did I say the right? Colon hydrotherapy. Um, yes. And um, so we also have medical doctors. We have pharmacists. Um, gosh, what else? There's we have personal trainers, we have Pilates, and even we, you know, physical therapy. Some of the things that I think it's important to know is that even within the things that you're like, oh, well, there's physical therapists all over the place. Well, the Elizabeth Stroot for, Dr. Elizabeth Stroot for um, Core Wellness, they do a lot of very specific women's health physical therapy. Um, so there's just, we have so many different opportunities for someone that's looking for any kind of doctor to be able to find one. Is it possible for us to get the picture up? Oh, yeah, sorry. Hold on. So which, pic which picture? Of all the members of the wellness the district. Members, gotcha. Sorry, give me just a second. There you go. Wellness district list. Wellness district list? Yes. Okay. Yeah, I mean, look at that list. Fitness studios, wellness providers, there's spa and wellness retail. I mean, we have someone who makes amazing soaps and um, loofahs, and we've got a float center. There's just so many different options. Okay, great. All right. Well, Melissa, what I would love to hear from you is a little bit of your perspective of the history of um, how you've seen the wellness community grow over time? Well, I, that's such a good question. So I, um, having a business that's a little bit of an anomaly type business, I uh, really recognized a long time ago, even before I moved into Vital, how open the community was to not only wellness businesses, but wellness wellness business that are of a different type and certainly what i do is you know not mainstream not run of the mill and it was it was really attractive to me that there was this amazing thriving wellness community that would accept you know medical doctors or chiropractors chiropractors but also someone like me who does something a little bit different i don't know if you remember years ago there was a, a gal who did i think it was called balneotherapy and it was like a water big water tank and she did manipulations. Remember that Lola? Yeah. And I thought, well, that, wow, if that community supports that business, certainly they would, you know, hopefully support mine. And they really have, they really welcomed me. Delray really welcomed me with open arms. And, um, and I think that's why I've never left because I, my clients love coming to Delray. They love the fact that they can go to other wellness businesses or the farmer's market all on the same day, uh, within the same house or the same street. So, I think really we got it going on in terms of comprehensive businesses and um, the amount of businesses in the wellness district are growing every day and we want you, <laughs> we want you to join. So um, yeah, I'm just, I, as I've said before, very honored to work alongside other healers in this, in this district. Yeah. Awesome. Um, I believe Melissa that you once quoted in this recent article, um, the wellness uh -oh. district was called into existence out of the dedication, creativity, and sheer will of its practitioners. Bravo. Did I say that? You did. <laughs> I, I think it's absolutely true. I mean, I know, you know, we can really credit Dr. Lola for framing and naming the wellness district. I, can you hear I think that that, even just speaking that Lola brought us even more, um, it became a more cohesive thing after we made the declaration. And I think it's been a really organic process. I think we've come from, you know, uh, actually from the beginning, a lot of a lot of wellness businesses, now there's even more uh, plethora of wellness businesses. So we're growing all the time, we're constantly um, changing and moving, you know, even bravo to, to Zebra Press and ZTV for uh, having the Wellness Wednesdays. I mean, people, especially now at this time, this, you know, terrible pandemic time, we need to be able to reach out and support each other. And how do we get through this? How do we get through this mentally, physically, spiritually, emotionally? Um, and that's, it's just proof in the pudding that that's, that's what this district is all about. Yeah. 
I agree. I feel very proud to be part of the district. Um, I think the one one of the first things I noticed was like the heart of the district and the collaboration. Ever have. After having been around people who are competitive and you know worried about stealing business and coming from a uh, place of scarcity, it's so refreshing to be around people who want each other to succeed. And that's what I love about our partnerships. If like you know, if I'm doing well, if I'm what do I want to say like. If I'm doing well and you're doing well, we're all doing well, right? And the better we work together, you know, the more powerful we are. And I think the thing that really drives part of our community is our true dedication to really helping people live their best lives and being healthy. And I love that because what these ladies won't tell you is all of the hours they spend voluntarily to run festivals, to organize the district, to run fun networking happy hours. And you do that just because you want to. And you care about our community and you care about the feel. And I think a lot of people feel that and appreciate it. I definitely do. So, so thank yeah. you for that. And well, well we appreciate members. you, Dr. Lauren, for, you know, come bringing us together and leading us and we, we need you. Yeah. Well, thank you. Oh, well, I guess enough self-love. So let's move on to just <laughs> recapping the wellness um, district major events of the year, Lola. Okay. So our big major events that we have, um, we have in June, we have the Well Ray Festival. It's an outdoor wellness festival. We have in September is when we do our wellness month. It actually has started out in the past as a wellness week, and this year we went big and did it the whole month. Um, in December, we do 12 days of wellness. And then throughout the year, there's other places that you'll see us really being active with um, blood drives or helping to sponsor different events like La Bella Strada or the Turkey Trot. Um, there's also the big Halloween parade there. We you know, do the uh, nutrition bag score. So there's quite a few things that we do throughout the year. Okay, great. Thank you for capping that. And um, Melissa, if somebody wants to join, who's eligible to join the Wellness District and how do they find out about the Delray Business Association? How do they find about DR about DRBA? Yeah. Well, any wellness business can join the Wellness District. They do have to be a member of DRBA. So that would be the Visit Delray website, correct? Mm-hmm. Yeah, so go find out about that. I mean, I... Um, in terms of my participating with DRBA, it is invaluable to be part of DRBA as a wellness practitioner in Delray. It is, I personally, I love the concept of team and not only within Vital, but extending out to the whole community. I think that's what the wellness district in DRBA is all about, is being part of a team and being, um, I think we have it in terms of what, we all have each other's back and there really isn't, I mean, certainly there's no other colon therapist in town, but um, within the different practices, there really isn't that competition because like you said before, everybody wants, everybody wants to help everybody do well. Everybody wants everyone to succeed. So there's no other, other organization like that. So, but if you're a wellness business, you certainly can be part of the wellness district. Yeah. And, and I, take I mean, we see that about. within our own subcategory, but I think we could agree that's true for the whole Delray Business Association of that, like, really team effort. I, I really feel that they support each and every sector of the businesses, and they really want to promote us and help us grow and succeed and, you know, really, I think, connect us with the community, too. And that's what I love about Delray. Business owners are, like, out on the streets meeting people, talking to people, and I think especially in our uh, wellness district that's really important because sometimes with doctors or unusual procedures if you will like cl cleaning your colon like you may be nervous so so i think that's a good part about us in this uh, show hopefully is to really personalize business owners and make them approachable so you can ask your questions and seek the services well, you i think I think real quick, Lauren, I think that's a mirror of, of really the depth of what the wellness district is all about. If I can thrive in Delray with this 
kind of out of the box modality and be supported by this amazing community, like that speaks volumes, right? Yeah, absolutely. absolutely. Yeah. Mm -hmm. So you can find the information about the wellness district on visitdelray.com slash wellness. That has the listing of our members. Um, You can also find information on the Delray wellness no, sorry, the Wellness District Del Rey on Facebook and Instagram. This is a growing project, but what we're hoping to do is mainstream a lot of our members' events, um, special news, uh, blogs, important information, as well as our events and fundraisers. So as Lola mentioned, currently we are raising some money for the uh, virtual Walk to Bust Cancer. So the national I actually cancer. didn't mention that, but yes, we are. Yeah. Mm-hmm. So Martha Carucci, who I just met, is amazing. The ex- executive director of the um, National Breast Cancer Foundation, Alexandria. So we, along with many other awesome people in Alexandria, are raising money for women in Alexandria to get the health care that they need in regards to breast health and other things of that nature. So feel free to look on our Facebook page. We do have the link there. We also have a blood drive coming up in November, which is the 18th. If you give some blood, you get an awesome swag bag. You also find out if you had COVID because they're doing antibodies testing. And of course they make it a safe and um, relaxing procedure. So, all right. Do, did we have any questions from the audience? Cause I can't see them. So I'm just checking in. Okay, I guess not. And if you did and we missed them, we'll answer them in the uh, show, in the comments or discussion of the show after. All right, so let's move on to the, uh, you know, that whole stress word. I'm sure you guys are tired of hearing about stress, but guess what? It's still here. We're still experiencing it, and we're experiencing it more than ever. Um, Personally, I think the community of the DC area or greater DC are already skilled prior to 2020 with being stressed out. They're very, we're very good at living high, maybe too much fast paced, anxious lives. So you add in the external stressors of 2020 and we've got quite a predicament. So what I'd like to hear, um, Lola and Melissa, I would love to hear your observations. We'll start with you, Lola, of what you're seeing with your clients um, and how what what they're saying and how is stress manifesting in the body? Yeah, yeah. so, wow. Well, um, stress, of course, always manifests in the body um, in many different ways for people. But honestly, I think one of the biggest things that we really started to see in our office starting in you know March and April was that people were coming in and they were having to work from home and they were working in these very awkward spaces. They were trying to you know type and do stuff like right at their you know dinner table and it just wasn't set up for them ergonomically. And they just were having so many different things like shoulder pain and back pain and stuff like that that they just wouldn't normally have. They're like, I don't know what's going on here. So, um, so that one was a big one. The other thing that we also noticed with it was that people really were not moving. People were waking up in the morning, coming downstairs, plopping themselves, you know, in front of their computer and pretty much staying there unless they got up to grab themselves another cup of coffee or, you know, went to the bathroom and their distance, their space in their house, everything's much closer together versus, you know, it's, Still, I think we need to do more activity, but if you think about that, a lot of people went from, you know, walking to the metro or walking to their car, and they usually had this kind of movement throughout the day, and um, that all went away. So it basically, it went from them doing probably a quarter of the amount of steps that they were doing prior to. So, um, yeah. I just comment on that, like, that's such an interesting observation it makes sense right but lay i think people are so happy at first i don't have to commute and they earn this time back in their day some people really did they're like this is great 
I mean, some people weren't showering, you know, but they were like, I can get up, I can spend some time with family. But what other people are finding on long side is that they're actually their work days are getting even longer okay. because yep. there's uh, difficulty with differentiating those boundaries between work and home. So to your point, like people are sitting even longer and moving less. Mm-hmm. So I'm absolutely yeah. hearing that too. Yeah. I mean, even people that would, you know, walk down the hall to go to a meeting, we're now like sitting out, you know, on the computer doing one zoom after another zoom after another zoom. And people, I mean, some people even were saying like, gosh, I don't even have time to get up and go to the bathroom. So like, they're like just really just sitting so much more. So the, yeah. Yeah. I, I decided to get one of those, uh, you know, step yeah. trackers uh, somewhere in the middle of the summer. And I was like, wow. I'm like, I don't think 2000 steps a day is what I'm supposed mm-hmm. to be doing. <laughs> you know, and I laugh because. I too was sitting doing virtual and, you know, kind of in the funk of like adjusting to everything that was going on. And and I was like, holy cow. So I'm happy to say that my movement has uh, improved since then. That's good. Uh, Definitely. But yeah, but you are talking about some good things about movement and also like new, uh, new, new issues in the body because of our, you know, sitting all day. Mm -hmm. Uh, Can we get uh, Melissa back on the screen? Her Skype was oh, I don't know. oh here awesome. she is. There. She's back. All right, oh, Melissa, awesome. can you tell me what you're seeing with your clients? So I have no biome. Oh, sorry. Whoop. Can you hear me? Yeah. I can't hear you guys. Can you hear me? Yes. Oh, thank God. I'm so sorry. <laughs> oh, thank God you're back. I was so proud of myself, too, because I got on. I got my earbuds. I'm, like, I'm so techno. And then lose the speaker. Anyway. You're doing great. Ask Adapting. Me Ask me the question again, and I will answer. All right. So what are you seeing with your clients? Um, what are they reporting about stress, and what are the effects it's having on their body? Well, I love what Dr. Lola said about so many folks. Um, and I mean, there's been days for me too that I was like that too. I'm certainly not. Uh, I'm, I'm part of that mix that they're moving. So a lot of people are coming in with, oh, I'm not moving. And maybe I had a bottle of wine last night. <laughs> you know, the, the syndrome of that, or I ate this takeout or that takeout. In the beginning, I think. So many people have reached, including myself, to their comfort food. So a lot of people are coming to coming to me in comp- just of distress that they've eaten and been drinking things they don't normally for months and months and months now. So, you know, that's an obvious for what I do. But I also think that so many people, um, obviously, our sleep's being affected, which I think Dr. Lola would agree most you know, most trainers and doctors believe that sleep is even more important than exercise. So if you're not sleeping and you're not moving and you're drinking wine, you know, which is wonderful, but over overdoing that and overdoing the chocolate chip cookies or whatever, it's just going to, you know, our mojo is going to get all um, bungled up. (laughs) <laughs> yeah so and traditionally you know in holistic medicine you get when we get stressed out we get hit in the gut so there you go but yeah yeah and i so. know that we're all holistic where practitioners. is my i am working your microphone went out again i don't know oh shh. okay 
<laughs> we will resort to hand signals. Um, so, you know, as for holistic professionals, I know that both of you are also hearing your clients speak about the stress. And they're, without a doubt, um, and what we're seeing, of course, in our um, offices also is that like people's limbic, limbic systems are in a awry. We're in a constant or near constant fight or flight um, state. And I really think the things you guys are speaking to are the things that can help to reduce our physiological arousal and to help buffer against stress. So when we're in a stress state and we're drinking and eating poorly and not moving, we are just making it a lot worse. And I think the thing that's important to remember is there there are things that are not in our control, but the things that we are always in control of is how we choose to respond to what's happening around us. And by God, don't worry, I am not choosing the right decisions and the right things every day either. But we have the ability to make a choice toward health or away from health. And I think in the next couple of weeks, you know, I think there's like an election or something going on. So I think, uh, you know, all the more that we're going to need to just do some simple steps to take care of ourselves. So I'd like to spin this back to you, Lola. Let's keep it simple. If you were to say from your perspective, expert opinion, what is the one thing that you would say people should do over the next few weeks or months to take care of their health? I would say that the biggest thing is to get moving. Get your body moving. If you're inside and you have to be working, um, doing a Zoom call, stand up, do some calf raises, like, you know, squat, do something, just keep yourself moving, walk back and forth. If you can, if you're just listening, take it on a walk, go outside. I mean, that's even better. So movement with being outside, you know, in nature, um, even if you're focused on what you're doing, but you're still out there and you're in the fresh air and you're in the sunshine and all of that, just so much better. So that would be my biggest tip, get movement and get outside. Awesome. And the movement can be easy, right? Could just be Mm -hmm. walking around your block, right? And taking a break. I believe they say like just even a quick brisk walk can reduce your cortisol levels 15%. So add in an actual like, you know, even more rigorous movement, you have the chance to really bring down, you know, that system of calming, which is our parasympathetic nervous system starting to relax and soothe. So exercise is great. One step at a time, right? Okay, great. What about you, Melissa? So, um, can you hear me? Hopefully. Yes, ma'am. Yeah. Okay, good. So, um, well, we touched on sleep before, and I think that uh, one of the one of the tools that I use, other than sleep, getting enough rest, seven eight hours of sleep at least. I have started doing um, yoga nidra, which is deep restorative. It's I think they say, and Lola, maybe you can back me up on this. They say that yoga nidra, when you do it properly, it it's like equal to like five or six hours of restorative rest. So you're not going into sleep, but you are going to a deep restorative rest. So I typically just put a yoga nidra like um, YouTube video on, and I'll even at work if I have a break in between clients, I'll um, take a quiet you know, half hour, 45 minutes to myself and listen to a yoga nidra meditation. And I will wake up feeling very refreshed, even though I couldn't take a nap or I couldn't go home and rest. I was able to get that deep restorative rest within my workday. So that's something that I'm doing. Would you also advise that maybe people could use that before sleep since people often have very active and busy minds? hundred percent. And, and I, I certainly have been guilty of, you know, Oh, I want to watch a movie on my tablet or something like that, which is mm-hmm. terrible. I know my blue light is terrible. So turning off those devices, I think Lola, I think the acupuncturist in your office was talking about that, turning off the devices, like at least a half hour, if not an hour before you start getting ready for bed. And yes, yeah, so you can definitely use yoga nidra as a sort of pre uh, preemptive into going to, sleep and also taking melatonin i take melatonin at night so and i want to add about the restorative um yoga that you're talking about like because people might kind of seem like oh i don't want to do yoga 
it's I call it sleeping yoga because literally you're just laying there. Perfect. And it's yogi. exactly. It's I amazing yogi. to me that the first few times that I did it and I got so annoyed because I was like, oh, this was supposed to have been like 45 minutes. And I thought I had been laying there for like five minutes. Oh, yeah. no. Mm -mm. The time went like that. And I was Amazing. shocked. It really puts you in that very, very deep, relaxed state. And it does. Um, especially if you haven't had sleep the night before. I'm sorry. Go ahead, Lauren. Oh, if I hadn't had, you know, let's say I didn't get good rest the night, you know, the night before. Like I say, taking some time within my work day, whether it's go take a walk around the block or we have a practitioner here at Vital that does Qigong in the parking lot. I mean, I'm going to start looking at Qigong as a way to, you know, really um, very intense, like focused relaxation. Mm -hmm. And I think about the yoga yoga or, you know, it's really a guided relaxation. So it also gives you something to focus on, which is meditation stops your focusing on um, whatever thoughts you're having, especially if they're anxiety oriented in future. Right. And, uh, you know, at the end of the day, it always amazes me like when I sleep more, eat better and walk. I feel better. I'm like, wow, this stuff is really true and we know it yet Amazing. sometimes <laughs> i know we choose not to do it uh but you know especially the sleep also when you're getting really good rem that's the time which your body is releasing the stress hormones that it's accumulated through the day also helps you consolidate memories um especially for traumatic experiences so you know those memories are less tied with uh painful associations or strong emotions. So there's a lot of stuff that happens during sleep. So maybe you get five more minutes of sleep or 10 more minutes, or maybe you shut out or try the yoga nidra. You know, we're happy to provide some other tips for anyone that asks. Um, and, you know, I, I think the last thing I could add would be to just give yourself some brain breaks. Um, I think we are constantly tuning in. A lot of people are tuning in to um, just things that are anxiety provoking and there's fact and then there's like future worry. And here's the thing, when you stay focused on future worry, you are suffering so much more than you may actually need to, because the reality is that thing may never happen. Or if it does happen, we'll feel it in the moment. So I'm not saying ignore and be uh, Pollyannish, but you can Put a pause on what you need to worry about. Worrying about something three weeks out nonstop is not going to change it from happening, right? But what you can do is choose to give yourself a break somehow and give your emotional system a break. Whatever that means for you, if that's exercise, that's sleep, that's listening to some music or, you know, meditation or just simply, you know, just having a good conversation or connecting with someone. Find the things that ground you and give yourself some peace. Okay. Ladies, thank you so much for joining me on this first. Thank you. Very first TV show and for your wisdom and for all that you do for the community with the wellness district, but also all the individual clients lives that you touch on a daily basis. Thanks for having us. Thank you. Bye-bye. And then I'll just say one concluding moment. Okay. I'll give that to you. Stand by for my closing statement. <laughs> enjoyed it. Okay. Oh, okay. Thank you, everybody, for joining tonight, and I hope that you enjoyed our presentation. I am looking forward to meeting with you again in two weeks and highlighting a new business or service. We have some fun ideas, but I'm really relying on your feedback to uh, your feedback uh, of what is useful and what you want to know. So please put in the comments, I want to learn about this, or I'd like to hear about this issue. We can cover anything that you want for the most part. Uh, I'm going to leave you with one quote for myself and then uh, with the uh, our final quote of the day. And my quote today to you is to remember that small steps eventually lead to big results. So 
any step you can do to better your health, if it's 1% or 2%, doesn't have to be perfect. It doesn't have to all happen linearly. Any step is a good step in the right direction. Okay, and as always, remember to Lost connection. It shot up right before this. It just shoot out, so we didn't get that. You can blame it on me. I don't know. Well, I know part of what went wrong. And then she and they brought up the problems with some of the Skype that weren't us. Does it have to have perfect? But anyway, I'll get it fixed. This is I'll okay. Fixed. Okay, so let me try to get everybody back up here. Uh, can, and ask them if they could. If you could if they can you could guys hear me? Yeah. yeah. Okay. Okay. okay, I You'll can't see. Away, all right, we're just talking. My apologies. I, 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 did, all right. I, I, I think we that. rolled with it pretty you well. Did, you all did great. You all were all, all oh my God, 